السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today we'll continue our ECG course and today presentation in uh, AV nodal reentry tachycardia my name is Ahmed Al Hadidi I am emergency medicine consultant so uh, AV nodal reentry tachycardia is the most common uh, cause of palpitation in patients with a structurally normal heart uh, it's caused by functional re-entry circuit in the AV node itself. So uh, it happens typically paroxysmal, uh, maybe uh, provoked and maybe spontaneously uh, onset. Uh, as we said, it's uh, re-entry functional re-entry circuit. So there is two functional pathways within the AV node. The slow pathway, which is alpha bus, uh, pathway, it's a slowly conducting uh, pathway with short refractory period. And the second pathway is fast pathway, beta pathway, which is rapidly conducting pathway, but with long refractory period. So slow pathway with short refractory period and fast pathway with a uh, longer refractory period. So normally when there is sinus rhythm, that uh, uh, two pathways, the uh, impulse will, will go through the two pathways and it will go from uh, the fast pathway to the slow pathway and will both of them will uh, end each other. So, and normally the impulse will go from the fast pathway from the atria towards the ventricle. So, during sinus rest, one impulse from SA node will go uh, in both pathways together and from fast pathway will go to the uh, uh, other end of the slow pathway and both will abrupt each or cancel each other. So what will happen if there is premature atrial contraction? So if there is premature atrial contraction, it will go from the SA node, from the atria here above uh, uh, and AV node here, it will find the fast pathway is still refractory and it's still enduring the refractory period. So it will go through the slow pathway only. And once it reaches the end of the slow pathway, it will find that the fast pathway refractory period finished, and it will go through the fast pathway retrograde from down to above. This will create uh, an entry uh, circuit and will continuously uh, 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 debolarize the ventricle and the atria. So this circuit will be endless. Cyclic movement of the impulse from one impulse uh, uh, through the slow pathway from the atria to the ventricle, uh, anti-grade and fast pathway retrograde. This is called slow, fast AV nodal reentry. So anti-grade from above downward through the slow pathway and retrograde through the fast pathway. Again, so during if premature atrial contractions happen, this is the first type of AV nodal reentry tachycardia, which is a slow, fast AV nodal reentry tachycardia and most common, and it appears in 80 to 90% uh, caused by or provoked by premature atrial contraction. The uh, contraction will come here. It will find that the fast pathway is still uh, refractory. So we'll go through the slow pathway only. And once it reaches the end of the AV node, we'll go up through the fast pathway, uh, debolarizing the atria again. This leads to uh, appearance of retrograde B wave, which is uh, uh, obscured or hidden in the QRS itself, or even may appear in the end of the QRS as pseudo R or pseudo S. So again, here is a, a normal sinus rhythm, and this is the start with premature atrial contraction. So premature atrial contraction here will find the fast pathway in a refractory period. So we'll go through the uh, slow pathway. Once it reaches the refractory period finished, so it will go up during the uh, or through the fast pathway creating a re-entry circuit. So one premature atrial contraction started the AV nodal re-entry uh, 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 supraventricular tachycardia. So ECG criteria for a uh, slow pathway, uh, 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 slow fast AV nodal re-entry tachycardia, B wave is hidden in the QRS complex, which is most common, or may appear in the end of the QRS complex in V1 as 
pseudo R or may appear in uh, inferior leads as pseudo S, small B waves at the end of the QRS complexes. And of course, it's uh, supraventricular tachycardia, so it will be a fast heart rate between 200 to 300 and narrow complex, except if there is a bundle branch block or uh, apparent conduction. Here, uh, as you can see, this is again pseudo uh, uh, R in uh, V1. Uh, at the end, the B wave appears as pseudo R wave in V1 here appear as pseudo R wave in V1 after the end of the QRS complex. So the second type of if we know that intra tachycardia is fast, slow, and it appears in 10% of cases, and it's provoked by ventricular premature contraction. So if there is one ventricular premature contraction comes from the ventricles, so it will go through the AV node, will find that the fast still refractory period. So it will go through, through the slow pathway from down up, retrograde. Uh, through the slow pathway and depolarizing the atria, then will go through the fast pathway anti grade from up down. This will uh, lead to retrograde B wave, which usually visible after the QRS before the T wave. So ECG criteria, you will find QRS, B wave, T wave complex. So B wave is retrograde and visible between the uh, QRS and T wave, as you can see here, a small B wave between the QRS and T wave. If we enlarge it, so small B wave between the QRS and T wave. So QRS, B wave, T wave. QRS, B wave, T wave. As a management for AV nodal reentry tachycardia, we will start with vagal maneuvers like putting ice over uh, the face or carotid massage, uh, although there is a risk of uh, uh, carotid uh, thrombus uh, or carotid embolism uh, dislodgement, and also valsalva maneuver, all of these are vagal maneuvers. Second and first main uh, line uh, treatment is adenosine. Adenosine is a one disease drug. It's used only for uh, treatment of SVT, uh, uh, supraventricular tachycardia. Side effect, it can cause chest pain, bronchospasm, hypotension, and of course, facial flushing and may be seizures. Contraindicated in bronchial asthma patient and patient with sick sinus syndrome or heart block. Uh, it's a mechanism of action, it causes of uh, AV nodal uh, blocking for seconds, only seconds. And uh, uh, half-life for adenosine is very short, uh, around 30 seconds. So you have to put anticubital fossa uh, uh, cannulation. It should be cannula 18 or above. And put three-way, as we can uh, see here, put three-way one uh, uh, syringe with adenosine and the other syringe with saline uh, flush. And of course, we'll uh, inform the patient that he will give him medication and for seconds, he will feel as if his heart stopped or uh, uh, he will feel uh, the side effect of the adenosine for seconds and it will improve immediately. And those, uh, we start with six milligram and if there is no effect after uh, one or two minutes, we can give 12 milligram. If no effect, we can increase the dose to 18 milligram of adenosine. And as you can see here, this is supraventricular tachycardia. And uh, we monitor and putting the patient to monitor during giving adenosine. As you can see, there is a slowness of the uh, heart rate and conversion to sinus rhythm with rate of around 150 or 140. This is a pediatric SVT rhythm. Uh, other medication can be used uh, other than adenosine is calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, and amadrone. And of course, if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, we will do uh, electrical uh, cardioversion. Uh, as a permanent solution, um, uh, some of the patient might need catheter ablation if it's recurrent supraventricular tachycardia, AV nodal reentry tachycardia. 
thank you so much and see you next video don't forget to uh, like and share our